welcome to another edition of Park Talk Podcast, the official podcast of the Naperville Park District. Hi, everyone. I'm Sue Amundsen. This is our second episode in our series about retirement. Many people in the baby boomer generation are now retiring, as approximately 10,000 people are turning 65 each day in the U.S., Transitioning from a busy, full-time job to a life without that daily occupation can be challenging. Connecting with the Park District can help, whether it's finding the perfect retirement job, volunteering, starting a fitness program at the gym, or taking a class to learn a new skill. Today, I'm happy to welcome as our guest, Don, who found a great retirement job, in fact, more than one job, at the Naperville Park District. So to start, would you just give us a little background about uh, where you worked and what your working life was like before you retired. Sure. I, I spent the last 40 years of my life in healthcare. Pretty much the secondary part of it where it's either pharmacy or medical equipment that's supplied to the home. The last 20 years of my career, I spent at Rush University working for their infusion uh, therapy department. And I enjoyed that immensely. I always liked working for Rush University. I like to help people. I like to work with people. Well, I can tell that. The first time I met you, I remember uh, you were just so friendly and um, really seemed to enjoy helping people at the fitness center. Yes. And boy, I have a lot of respect for Rush University. They do outstanding research there. They are. They're a great facility. When and why did you decide to retire? Well, that's, that's kind of a funny story because I, I hadn't really decided to retire. I had a plan that was going to extend an additional five years prior to my retirement. But when I came back from vacation one year, at uh, I was almost 65, I had an email saying that we're offering you a buyout. And so I was like, okay, let me look at what they did with the last couple buyouts and what my longevity would be if I stayed. Then I solicited help from my son. One of my sons is an actuary. Gave him all the data, said, run me some numbers. And then I went to my brother-in-law, who was a financial planner, did the same thing and said, what do you think? Then they both called me back and said, take the money and run. (laughs) (laughs) So I said, okay, I'm going to retire. It was just, what do I do next? Because I didn't want to just stop because I was used to working 60 hours a week, five, six, sometimes seven days a week. And I just didn't know where to fill that void. Right. Um, so this was this was just an interesting opportunity that came up when I wound up here. How it, did you find the park district? Well, I, I didn't initially find it at first because I used to come here. This was my stop on my way home from work. I would stop and shoot basketball for an hour. Oh, wow. And I okay. would talk to another retiree that was working here, Mike. And we would talk baseball. And I was like, he's a pretty good guy. This is nice people. And I thought, this would be a fun thing to do. Um, so I didn't really have a plan. I, I fully intended to go back to work full time and maybe generate another pension or just see where I can do something productive. Mm-hmm. That didn't pan out very easily because as you get older, most places want you to either work. Well, we, we want your skill, but we want you to work these bizarre hours or we want you right. to work a weekend. Or, right. And I was like, okay, I've done this for 40 years. I pretty mm-hmm. much, I work these days, I work these hours, I'm available, I'll give you these skills. I'm not looking for a, a big paycheck. I just mm-hmm. want to keep busy. Sure. And then this came up because I had put myself out on a few sites and I started working with the basketball program at night. And I, and I, like, I liked it. I liked it quite a, quite a lot. I mean, the people here are good people. Their mission is good. Um, they're fair people. If they tell you something is so, they back it up. Um, and the environment is good. And I think it's healthy because it's good for the kids in the neighborhood. I meet a lot of seniors that like to come up here and work out. And it's just been a great network for me to kind of expand myself personally after work. And that's pretty much how I want up here, just wow. by luck. <laughs> so you you started out helping out with the youth basketball program? With, I started working with um, open gym basketball oh, okay. Okay. at night, working for Fred. Right. And well, Fred and Christina, really, because Christina runs that. Right. And that kind of brought me over to youth basketball with Fred working the scoreboard, which I, I do because I, I like that as well. My daughter, one of my daughters played basketball and I coached that for a couple of years. So I thought this would be a lot of fun. 
bring back some fond memories. Mm. And I got really involved in that and like that. Then someone else came to me one day and said, hey, we don't have anybody to do any tours. I need a backup. Would you, would you help us over at Carolyn? I said, sure, why not? I, <laughs> I'd give it a try. And I, I knew the young lady uh, very well. And I said, I'd be happy to, to do that. And I did that until pandemic closed it. Right. Um, and then when the pandemic closed that, I got an email from HR saying, hey, even though everything's closed, they really need help over at Frontier. Anybody interested? So I guess I was the only one who applied. <laughs> and I said, sure, I am. Was that Frontier Park? Fr- Frontier uh, Sports South. Com- Sports one Complex. Off. Yeah, yes. okay. Yeah, so I started working over there for, I think John is the one who hired me. Okay. And now John's the boss over right, there. Right, right. I work for Jesse and with another young lady named Maddie, who was a sure who was a um, a student going through her internship at the time when I started. So to see her come on there full time and kind of see how they they took a talented young person and kind of cultivated that person and brought them into the fold, that really excited me about working with those people. Oh, so I only do it one day a week now, but I still like to do it because it's. I garden over by a park where there's kids. Right. And God, I love talking to kids. You just never know what they're going to say. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So they always like to come up because I drive a little red golf cart around the oh, complex. I bet they like that, yeah. And they just love to chat with me or ask me questions about flowers. and It's just nice. Oh, that's great. You get to be outside. I get to be outside. I um, get to do something I like. Retirement's more about doing things you find fun um, that bring you joy. And if it brings you joy, it's going to bring other people joy. So that's kind of what's neat about working here. You know, I could do everything I like to do. I get to talk to people. I try really hard to memorize names of members. You're really good at that. I, thank you. <laughs> I, I just think it's a polite way to do it. And I, I like this. Like I could give you an example. When I first met you, your question to me was, how did you know my name? I know. <laughs> and whenever a member says that to me, I, I tell them, and I, I, like, I like the smile I get back from them. And I think they appreciate the fact that someone knows them here. Mm-hmm, so it's a, good, it's, a, it's a good win-win for both of us. Well, when we first started thinking about Fort Hill Activity Center, we wanted it to be a community place, a place for families, a place for people of all ages to you know, feel like they belong and have any. And it is. It really is. So so when someone, you know, sometimes you go to work out and you might not be that motivated that day and think, oh, what does this matter? But then when someone says hello to you by name, I think it really, it, it makes it feel like, oh, somebody knew that I was here. It, it does. It <laughs> does. It's more like a bond. You know, mm-hmm. it's like the old program cheers that they used to have back in the 80s or 90s when Norm would walk in and everybody would yell, Norm, It's I like to do that here, you know. Sue, Mary, <laughs> Joan, you know, Ralph, hey, how you doing? Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's fun. So with at the Frontier job, you do things like weeding and mulching and things like I that? I weed, I plant, I mulch, I prune, um, I water. They kind of, the first year they they spent time training me and they pretty much liked what I was doing. I, I like this too. They They trusted me enough to say, this is your park. We want you to just take care of it. Tell wow. us if you need something. Um, these are our goals. Here's a booklet about all the plants. And if you need help with some, let us know what you need. And we'll work with you. And they're very responsive about that. That's great. That is, uh, uh, sounds like a great work environment. It is. I, I actually brought in another retiree over there that uh, was moving up this way that I know very well. And he was looking to do something outdoors. And I said, go talk to John at Frontier. <laughs> I'll tell him your name and he'll expect you. They hired him. He loves it too. That's wonderful. It's very flexible. And then how did you uh, begin the position here at uh, Fort Hill Activity Center? You're a fitness attendant, is that right? Well, I first started out as an open gym attendant. That's right, yeah. And I was doing that, and I really enjoyed taking uh, the basketball because that was more of a tougher crowd. It's more of a physical game. Mm. So sometimes you'd have to kind of interject and say, hey, right. we, need to, we need to calm this down a little bit <laughs> nice. or let's be better sportsmen. Mm-hmm. And then when the pandemic hit... Everything got shut down. That's right. So I was kind of in a void trying to fill up my time with volunteering here and there. And then I got an email from Christina saying, hey, we don't have this open yet, but we have this if you're interested. So, of course, I responded right away and said, sure, I'm, I'll, I'll do that. Um, in the beginning, it was just hit and miss shifts. 
And then I seemed to settle into a certain routine that worked for the facility, worked for me, and kind of worked with me getting to know members very well. So Mm -hmm. it it worked out very well. Oh, that's great. Because I do remember that time during the pandemic when we had to close Open Gym, but we started opening up the fitness center yes with, with restrictions, and restrictions and reservations yeah right those are the challenging right. days <laughs> very, very challenging and so your duties there are to just sort of monitor the machines you and you all had to disinfect every day too yes we would we, during the pandemic we'd have to actually shut down and do a, a total disinfection right. right now every shift we have a group of us will work and clean each piece of equipment in the area. Wow, As well as nice. we look around the facility, make sure doors are locked or doors are open. We got a pretty good reporting system for letting Christina know that, hey, this is broken. Mm-hmm. And they take a lot of pride here on keeping the equipment at its peak performance all the time. That's great. We really appreciate nice. that. It just sounds like you're keeping yourself quite busy with all these different jobs. Yes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's great. I like to keep... You know, you, you're working and you go from working 60, 70 hours a week right. for all those years. You just can't shut that motor off. <laughs> so what do you do with all that energy? Right, right. You dial it back a little bit and you find things to do that you really enjoy. And this is what I enjoy. And most of the retirees that I work with here, they do it because they enjoy it. They get the same. I see them getting a lot of the same pleasures I do out of this job. So what advice would you have for others as they begin adjusting to life after their careers are over? Well, I could could tell you what I know a lot of people have told me and what I've done. First, accept it. (laughs) (laughs) And then accept that change is going to happen and be welcoming to the change because it'll be good if you look for it. Find what your passion is. Find what you, you spent your life raising your children, um, taking care of your parents, doing things in the community. Now it's time to kind of focus on yourself. Um, So I would say just find what you want to do. Take a couple of months. Don't be in a hurry. I took three months to kind of see what I wanted to do, working a little bit here, volunteering a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Um, Started doing this at Fort Hill and liked it. Luckily for me, it turned into other opportunities. Um, So I didn't have to look for two or three different things to do. Right. Um, which at the time I was doing two, I was doing volunteer one place and doing this. So I was able to just kind of focus more on opportunities within the park district because there's so many. If you want to work outside, work outside. <laughs> you want to work indoors, work indoors. You want to work with kids, work with kids. They've, they've pretty much got it all. But if you're set financially, um, which most of the retirees are, mm-hmm. and you like to do something that's more serving your community, And that's what I look at this is it's community service uh, with a real, real nice upside. This is great for people, male, female, anybody that wants to expand their, make a a good, happy retirement. Well, thank you so much, Don. Um, This is really encouraging to hear. And uh, I wish you all the best in continuing to help the Park District. And we really appreciate you. Thank you for listening. The Naperville Park District's mission is to provide park and recreation experiences that promote healthy lives, healthy minds, and a healthy community. Park Talk Podcast is a production of the Naperville Park District.